folks. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today I thought we would take a second and kind of talk about, see if we can get a discussion going about the state of uh, your local music scene and maybe your small town local music scene. Um, I thought I'd share my experience um, in playing in the one that I've played in for a very long time. Um, I live in a small town, um, you know, have for a long time, and all of my gig experiences pretty much is within there. I lived in Nashville for a little bit, but by and large, most of it has been small town kind of things. And I'm guessing most of your experiences are the same if you are a gigging musician. Um, I started, I'm old, so I've been doing this for a really long time, just under 40 years. Um, so I kind of came up when I was young. It was the, you know, the mid-80s when I first started playing gigs and stuff. And um, I thought I'd just take a second and talk about how I've seen it change in my area um, over the decades, and really especially in, in the last 20 years or 15, 20 years or so. We all know the music industry has totally changed. No one has a CD player anymore. There's dwindling ways of musicians to make money anymore. So that's a debate you could argue on both sides of that for the pros and cons of that. Music's basically free now. But I would argue, for the point of this discussion, music, the way music is consumed has greatly changed um, in the time that I've been playing. And it's reflected in the types of gigs you can get now, um, in the way people interact and participate in what you're trying to do anymore, at least from my experience. This is all just my one guy's in a basement's experience, okay? You'll have your own, and I'd love to have you share it beneath so we can maybe see what it's like around the country or the world, even, if people are watching this. But in the 80s... You could have a pretty large, but it was pretty common to have a big, large rock band. Um, there, the PA systems were huge. There was light shows. Um, you know, most of the places you played were in bars or clubs, however you want to refer to that. Um, most of them had some sort of a stage area, um, so there was room for a four or five piece band or six piece band and a sound man and a light guy and all that stuff could fit in there. Um, and the, the clubs paid to have all that stuff in there. So you weren't getting rich. You make about the same amount of money you make now. But, um, you know, you could get these kind of gigs where you could bring a full lamp set up out. And you could make, it could be a little noise. Um, you could make a big racket, you know. And people came out to that club um, to listen to music and party and dance and do all of that stuff. And they were there all night. It'd become, we used to joke that, you know, it didn't get started till 11 o'clock. You might start at 10. It would play 10 to 2 or something like that. But, you know, no one would even start dancing until 11 o'clock or something when they start to get a little liquored up. And that's the place would get more and more crowded as the night went on. And I don't think it was band dependent. It was based pretty much on the club. Each club or bar had its own clientele that maybe lived in the neighborhood or liked that particular venue. And some of it would be coming out to see the band. But really, you played every place, and, and every place had um, a full crowd almost all the time. There was very few times I remember playing where there wasn't a bunch of people there dancing and having a good time and, and all of that kind of stuff. So it was a really fun time. I'm really glad I got to play in that time. When I talk to people who are from the generation before me, um, it was very common in this area to be able to play four or five times a week in those kind of environments. You know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'd be able to play that many gigs in a small town like this. There was just enough clubs, and the people supported the music, and they would come out because they liked live music, um, and they wanted to participate in it and dance and have a good time and have a few drinks, meet some people. It was a very much a social thing and a cultural thing, I think, at the time. And it was even that way a little bit in the 80s. Not so many places not so many gigs i would say you know like we pretty handedly always played every friday and saturday for sure maybe a thursday friday saturday occasionally if there was some sort of special thing at a campground or something maybe a sunday but it was always at least two days a week um that we played pretty consistently over time what has happened is we've gone from that and, and again i'm just kind of speaking to my area to most of the clubs um and by the way, let me just back up a second. In that same time when there was those clubs with stages and stuff, when I'm using the term club, I'm referring to what I'll call animal clubs, which is your legions and your elks and your antlers and your moose lodges and your VFWs, that kind of thing. Um, so there was, there was two circuits on that, depending on what you were doing. One would be like the, the bar circuit, and then the other, you could play all the time. Uh, in, and I did in the legions, in the animal clubs, and that sort of thing. So I just want to clarify the use of the term club as I'm using it. So 
let's shoot forward to now what, what I'm kind of seeing. So we still have those animal clubs, or the clubs, okay? Uh, the problem is, is they don't run bands like they used to. Many of them, they used to run bands every single week, never run bands now, or they're maybe down to once a month, and they just don't have um, the membership to support that kind of stuff anymore. Those places used to be jammed. Um, one of the private clubs we used to play back in the 80s, you'd play till 2 o'clock in the morning, and they'd lock the door and start serving breakfast. I mean, and, and, and go. I mean, it was an all-night thing. Um, and they just don't have the the membership anymore in these places. They're all kind of struggling. And when you do see the members that are in them, not, I mean, I'm old too, but they're, they're even older than me. It's a very old clientele. So obviously at some point, they're, they're not going to be a viable place anymore if the membership, as the membership passes away, if they don't bring in younger, newer memberships. And the, and the problem is, most of the young, a lot of the young folks don't really care about live music anymore. Even when you go out around here and see people playing, by and large, the people that are still interested in and in kind of supporting live music, what, even on a bigger level, even on like what I'll call AAA bands that are kind of known and you know maybe 80s metal bands or whatever, when you look around, it's an, a very old um, audience, you know. So I think the younger generation does not appear to be as interested in live music as uh, you know we were back in the day. So when you come now, like a lot of those places are not having as many bands as often, or none at all. And the bar that used to be uh, have the bands a lot of times don't exist anymore. They're really what's left is is restaurants. So it might be a a brewery or a restaurant, um, that kind of thing. That seems to be where m the majority of the gigs are. And I'm, it, within the last 10 years, it's getting hard to even get a band booked in those areas um, because a lot of them are just going down to singles and duos with an acoustic guitar or whatever that happens to be. It's, and I understand it. I mean, that, this all makes sense. If you don't have people that are supporting live music, why would you want to pay for a whole band when you can spend 100 bucks and get someone to come in and play for three hours with an acoustic guitar, two hours or whatever, and have entertainment for the folks that are there? So one thing that happens is the places that now seem to have bands um, are have no space for them. So they might be a tiny restaurant, and they have a little tiny corner, and they book our, you know, like our band's a three-piece band, and they jam us back in the corner. There's barely enough room um, for anything. And then, of course, it's always too loud, right, because there's real drums. So there's live drums in a restaurant. So people are trying to have dinner, right, and again, I totally understand it. Um, and, but the drums kind of dictate the volume of a band, right even not mic so a drum can only be played so softly with a stick and then at some point the instruments have to come up to whatever that volume is but a lot of these places it's just you know it's that's too loud as it is so you're constantly struggling with volume and then there's not enough room to really set up and be careful people are walking by you to go to the bathroom or servers are bringing people's food right past your you uh, on the stage area you know <laughs> if you want to call it that so that's been one of the biggest switches that I've seen and when we talk about it from a point of view as doing a singles or a duo, I would even call it, around here we call it the patio circuit. So over the summertime, there's a lot of gigs that you can do on the patio circuit if you're interested in playing and singing by yourself or with a duo uh, on a patio someplace. And nothing wrong with that because every little restaurant in our area anyway now has some sort of a patio thing for outside seating. And that's where they try and stick people. From a musician's standpoint, again, a lot of times it's a small area um, and you're always at the will of the weather, you know, so if it's going to rain uh, or any of that kind of stuff or it's too hot, we played some, a ton of ours got rained out this past season because it's been really rainy where I'm at this summer. And then we, the one of the ones that didn't get canceled, it was so blazing hot uh, that, you know, I was surprised I made it through without keeling over. It was that hot. So... There's always a, a give and take to all of this stuff, but that's kind of what the trend has been in our area. I'd be interested to see what what's going on where you are, you know. Um, in these restaurants, I'd even I'd even say, you know, people are the music is just a backdrop. It's not people actively participating in the music by and large. Not always, but by and large, they're having their dinner. They might hang around and maybe sit for another fifteen or twenty minutes and have one more drink, maybe and watch the music, but then they get them leave. The Most of the places, the gigs now are earlier and earlier, so instead of being 10 to 2 a.m., the gigs now are, you know, 7 to 10, 
or or 6:30 to 9:30. You know, they're 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 getting earlier and earlier, which is great as an old musician like me. I like to get home, but. Uh, what happens is people have their dinner. People are gone even at by 8:30, so they'll have dinner in the restaurant or whatever, and then they're done after they eat. And even the last set, there's usually hardly anybody there anymore. Um, so it's just hard, it's hard to get. There's no built-in uh, crowds at any of these places because it's just people eating meals, right? So they have to turn tables. So they move them out. Another group comes in. There's not like usually a bunch of people hanging around because they would have to have a reservation to get a table a lot of times and and that sort of thing. So it's even hard to get, you know, friends to come to places like that because they don't want to feel like they're taking up a table in a restaurant without buying an expensive dinner like a lot of these uh, places are. Um, but that's kind of been my experience with it. Um, I'm not saying it's worse or better or you can use, draw your own conclusions if you're playing in this kind of an environment as well. I just thought it'd be an interesting discussion. So if you are a gigging musician and you go out and play around, I'd be anxious to hear what, what you guys do. Uh, you know, by and large, I would say most musicians are, are, you know, what we would call bar band music. We're playing in cover bands on the weekends or whatever. That's what most of us do. Most of us aren't going to have the luxury of playing big theaters or halls or anything like that with a road crew and all that. <laughs> kind of, that's a whole different thing. I'm specifically talking about, you know, us folks that are in bar bands and playing in restaurants and bars and that clubs and that sort of thing like that. So if you have experience, I'd love to see or hear from you. Go ahead and post it in the comments. If you enjoy any of this kind of comment, this content or discussions, please subscribe and like. Uh, that way we can maybe build a community here and uh, get some, keep the discussions going. So as always, I appreciate you listening. Thanks so much. Have a great day.